Good morning, Double Branch, as well as everyone else watching today with us. Again, we're not having service here at Double Branch. It's strange times, and hopefully this will end soon, and we can once again gather back as God's people in a church service. Uh, we are glad, again, to have the ability to come to you through the internet like this. Of course, this is not a church service. This is simply a message this morning, and we thank God for that. And yet we long for the day when we can come back together and see each and every one of us at one of our church services. So my prayer today is the Lord will bless us and bless the message to our hearts today. Let me just say a few things before we get into the Word of God this morning. I encourage you who are at home watching this that you gather your family together. If there's, if there's children in your home that you bring your children in, that you watch the message together, that you speak about the things of God throughout the day. And I really want to encourage you today not simply just to watch this message, but to gather together, however many may be at your home, to read the Bible, to sing together, and to pray together. That we are not just simply watching something today, but that we in our own hearts and in our own homes are worshiping God with our hearts and souls today. And may the Lord get all the praise for that. We will, as many of you know, we will not have service this coming Wednesday. That's the 1st of April. As well as we will not have our youth activity that was scheduled for Friday the 3rd. And we will try to give more information as the days go on. Let us pray together. Our Father, we give you praise today. We thank you for your love for us, our God. We thank you, Father, for holding us in your hands, for taking care of us. And we ask today, Lord, that you would bless your word, that you would bless the message, that you would bless our hearts, Father, and that you would help us, Lord, we ask. We are in desperate need of your help today in so many different ways. Father, add your blessing now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favorite stories in the Bible, a story that gives me so much joy and comfort, is a story about King Asa in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 16. In this story, King Asa uh, is against the king of Israel. This is the time that... The kingdom has been split now. The king of Israel and the king of Judah and their kingdoms are against one another. And the king of Israel begins to fortify Ramah. And so that no one can come in or out of Judah. And instead of trusting in the Lord, the king of Judah, King Asa, goes to a foreign king and appeals to him for help. And that's just what happens. And it turns out that this happens when King Asa goes to this foreign king. The, the king comes. He does what King Asa wants him to do. The king of Israel stops fortifying Ramah, the city. And not only does he stop fortifying Ramah, but the king of Israel, the king of Judah and Judah goes and takes the supplies and the goods that the king of Israel were actually using to build with. It looks like it's a great victory for Judah. It looks like everything is wonderful in the kingdom of Judah. And yet, that is not at all the way that God saw it. Let me just read one verse to you right now. Verse 9. This is after the prophet comes in and rebukes King Asa. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely His. You have acted foolishly in this. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have wars. King Asa did not rely upon the Lord. King Asa did not trust in the Lord. And I fear at this time, 
We are being tempted to do just the same thing in our churches and in our society as Christians. We are being tempted not to trust in the Lord. We are tempted to fear right now. We are tempted to panic. And what I want to do this morning is again, with this, with the virus that's going around, with so much panic that's happening in our country, with so much concern, some justified, no doubt, some perhaps not justified, but with so much concern going on in our country, regardless of what actually is the case, this is what we're facing right now. We are facing panic, we are facing chaos, we are facing concern, and it is time for the people of God to stand on the promises of God, rely upon their God, and trust in Him and not in everything else. And that's what I want us to see today. I want us to look at three main things today. I want us to see, first of all, that there is a balance in this. Now, certainly what I mean by that is not that we trust God a little bit, and not trust Him a little bit on this side. No, we always trust in the Lord, and yet there's wisdom, there's balance. I want us to see that. And then I want us to look at two passages together in just a few minutes. So let me let me talk to you about this balance that we have to have. As, as many of you know, balance or wisdom in the Christian life is one of the most difficult things that we face today. And I'm not just speaking about the the crisis that we are in in this country and in this world today. I am talking about balance and wisdom in all areas of life. It is easy to go to one extreme or the other extreme. That's the case. Um, I've been that way before. I still struggle at times with it. To go to one extreme or to another extreme. We all as Christians want to do what is right. And yet, if we're not careful, we're going to be falsely extreme on one end or the other end. And we have to guard from that. There's a wisdom, there's a balance in the Christian life. And what's happening right now in our lives is just the same. There's wisdom and there is balance when it comes to all of this that's going on around us today. I want you to think about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was extremely bold for the Lord extremely bold and confident in his God. He went into a city once. They became upset at him. They ended up stoning him, leaving him for dead. And what happens? He got back up and went right back into that city. He was a bold man for the Lord. And yet the Apostle Paul tells us that once his disciples went to a window, put him in a basket and lowered him down, so he could escape from a city at night once. There's a balance in this. We are bold for the Lord. The Apostle Paul was bold for the Lord, and yet the Apostle Paul also escaped danger at times. If you think back to the book of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, there is conflict going on. They're trying to rebuild the walls. The Bible speaks about people who are working with one hand, and carrying their weapon in the other hand. Now people may say, "No, why didn't they just trust God and put their weapons down? Well, they were trusting in God. And they were carrying their weapon. There's a balance. There's wisdom. When you look at this, when you think about the, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10, Jesus is sending out His disciples. He says that you will stand before kings. You will stand before many people. And He says, don't even think beforehand about what you're going to say because My Holy Spirit is going to come within you and He will give you words to speak at that time. You can have confidence in your God. And yet, at the same time, in that same passage, Jesus says they're going to persecute you in one city, then go to the next city. Don't just stand there and be killed. Be wise in all of this. There's people today who are struggling with whether canceling church services is a lack of faith in God. And there's sincere Christians, no doubt today, struggling with that in their soul. What I would say is we have to be wise. We have to also 
as far as as long as we're not obeying man rather than God, we have to listen to the authorities that God has given us in this country. We have to be good citizens. Again, as far as we are not disobeying God in that, however. And yet when you think about things like this, we have to be careful not to presume on the protection of God. There's wisdom. There's a balance like I'm talking about. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is confronted by the devil. He's being tempted by the devil. Jesus has already quoted a scripture and yet now the devil comes back with him with the scripture. How many of you know the devil can quote scriptures as well? And he does. And the devil quotes the psalmist. And basically what is going on is this. The devil says to Jesus, cast yourself down, for it is written, his angels will come and guard you and you will not be hurt. The devil says, and he's quoting the Bible, that Jesus, if you cast yourself down from this pinnacle, the angels of God will protect you. If you're the son of God, why don't you do that? And Jesus says to the devil, it is written, you shall not tempt or test the Lord. See, there's a balance. There's a wisdom in all of this. God will protect us. But that doesn't mean I'm going to jump out of a plane without a parachute and expect God to protect me. There's wisdom. We do not, we are not presuming on God. We are wise. Yes, we trust in our Lord. He will protect us. And yet we would be foolish not to be concerned and take precautions as well. So there's a godly balance in all of this. We, we all need to find this balance. Yes, our trust is in God. But our God has given us wisdom. And one way that we trust God is by living wise in this world. So there's a balance in this. Now with that said though, I do want us to look at some verses with you. I want you to turn to Matthew 10 today. Matthew chapter 10. And I want us to look at a passage that I mentioned last Sunday in the message. We're going to look at it today though. Verse 29, starting. And it's this wonderful passage about the birds. The birds. Yes, we must be wise, but we must always know that we are always in God's hands. And for us to seek safety and protection is a good thing, and yet, friends, it is not the ultimate thing. Our life, do I want to be protected? I do. Do I want my wife to be protected? Yes. Do I want my children to be protected? Of course. Is that high on my list of priorities? 100% yes. Do I want to be protected? Of course. And as high as we ought to value protection and safety, we must also remember though, friends, the main goal in life is not to preserve our life, but to serve the Lord. That is it. Matthew chapter 10, listen to these encouraging ver verses. There's, there's maybe some of you very much struggling right now. You, you hear the reports. You, you hear these things going on. You see maybe people you know becoming sick and they're becoming afraid and you're being tempted not to trust in God. Well, friends, let us be encouraged this morning. Matthew chapter 10. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Maybe it's better, you can think of birds, of course, but maybe it's better for you to think back to when you were a kid and you went into a store where they sold fish and maybe you bought some small fish for 30 cents a piece. Well, the Bible says, in effect, that you can buy two fish for 60 cents and yet not one of those fish will die apart from God's will. And Jesus goes on and says this, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered, he says. Not only does he know about those fish, he knows about every single hair on your head. And if he knows about every single hair on your head, friend, he knows about you in particular. 
And then finally, verse 31. So do not fear, you are more valuable than many sparrows. If you are a Christian today, you can know that everything that happens, happens for a reason. Happens under the purposes of God. And God, though we cannot understand it, and though most certainly, friends, at times it is so painful, but God will somehow use that for good. That does not mean that everything that happens to us is good. Some things that happen are tragic. Sometimes someone rebels against the will of God. Yes, yes, yes. But as Christians today, we can know that God will take every bad thing that has happened and use that for our good. The Lord is good. The Lord knows every bird that dies. If he's, if he's concerned about the birds, surely He's concerned about us and knows us. And know this, friends, you will not die apart from God's will. God will, as George Whitfield said, listen to what George Whitfield said. He said, we are immortal until our work on earth is done. We're immortal, friends. We, we are going to live and live and live and live on this earth until our work is done. And when our work is done, God will call us home as Christians. God is in control of all these things and He's in control of our lives today. I want you to look at another passage in Matthew, it's in chapter 6 today. Matthew chapter 6. We're not going to read this whole passage, this great passage about not worrying. You can go and read it on your own later, starting in verse 24 or 25. But I want you to look down in verse 31, 32, and 33 with me. He says, do not worry then, saying, what will you eat? What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? How many people are worried and concerned and running around like there's not a God in heaven right now? Where am I going to get my food? Where am I going to get my necessities? Where am I going to get all the things that I need at home? What am I going to do? How many people are running around like madmen right now? Not trusting in God. Again, there's a balance. The ant prepares. Yes. So we need to prepare. All that is true. And yet, friends, we are not running around putting our hands together saying, oh, what are we going to do? Where are we going to get food from? Where about our clothing? What about all? What are we going to do? No, says Jesus. That is not the way that we do as Christians. And then he says this. For the Gentiles, now, probably the vast majority of you watching are Gentiles. I'm a Gentile. What that means is I'm not a Jew. I'm not Jewish. But when Jesus here in Matthew uses the word Gentile like that, what he means is he's looking at unbelievers here at this time. And when you use the word Gentiles, you're saying something negative. It's somebody who doesn't know God. It's someone who's a pagan, perhaps. They don't know God, they're a pagan, and they act like this. He may be thinking of some of the Romans and how they acted and how they believed and all the nonsense that they believed about so many gods and Caesar being a god and all that. Well, he says this, For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. He says, don't be like the pagans. Don't be like the unbelievers. Don't be like your neighbor doesn't know God. He says, no, we are not to worry about all these things like they do. But he says, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Friend, do you believe that you actually have a heavenly father. Do you actually believe that there is a God in heaven right now? And if you are a Christian today, he has given his son to die for you and you have come and believed in him. And friends, if God has given you his son, what more can he withhold from you? He cannot not give you anything greater, anything less. If He has given us 
His Son to die for our sins, He will give us everything that we need. I want you to notice what it says there. For your heavenly Father. The Bible says that He's in heaven and He's our Father. Both those terms are very important. First of all, He's in heaven. He is a great King. He is not like us. One of the great mistakes that people make today in Christianity is they think God is like them. But He is not. God is a great King and He deserves our worship. He is in heaven. He controls everything. And yet, our heavenly Father. This God who controls everything, this God who set everything in motion and sustains everything, this God who is sovereign over His world and our lives, this God who is in control is also the same God who is our Father in heaven. He's our Father, friends. If the God who is in control of everything is also our Father, then let us not act like those who do not have God as Father, who are yet to come and be born again and be saved. We have a God in heaven. He is our God. He is our Father. If we are Christians, He controls everything. He's over us. He knows our needs before we ask. He knows what we stand in need of. Listen, when my kids, and sometimes I need to pay more attention to my children, I do. But if my kids came to me constantly throughout the day or came to my wife constantly throughout the day and said, oh, mommy, daddy, please, please feed us. We're so hungry. Oh, what if we don't eat today? Do they not think that we know they're hungry? Do they not think that we know they need food? Do they not think that we love them? Do they not think we will provide for them? Do they not have any faith in us as parents? Well, friends, do we not have faith in God? Do we not believe He will provide? Yes, we must be wise. Let us not do things that God doesn't want us to do, and then we may have to suffer the consequences. But we have a God in heaven. He has given us everything we need. And if we will seek after Him and serve Him, He will supply our needs Listen to verse 33. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. It's very much like a soldier in the military. The soldier enlists. He's there. He's in the military. Well, the soldier doesn't have to pay his way, does he? The soldier doesn't have to provide his food, does he? He doesn't have to bring his own clothing, his own weapons, does he? No, once he's a soldier, the army, the military, takes care of his needs. And the same thing is true as Christians. Our first priority is serving God and His kingdom, seeking after Him and the things of God. And if we will do that, in other words, if we will be a Christian, then as it were, we are in the Lord's army. And if we are in the Lord's army, He's going to give us the food we need. He's going to give us the clothing we need. We may not have everything we want, but be sure we'll have what we need and God's will will be done in our life. If you have enlisted under the banner of Jesus Christ and you have enlisted under His Lordship, you are a Christian. He is your Lord and your Savior. If you are a Christian today, You're in the Lord's army. And the Lord will take care of of all those who serve Him. Don't you believe that? Don't you believe the Lord is better than any earthly organization? Any earthly person? We have nothing to worry about. And we have every reason to trust in the Lord. So these are different times. Um, These... These are, in some ways, perplexing times. In some ways. But what we need to do, yes, we need to be wise. We read God's Word. We pray. We listen to other Christians. What is the course we need to take that God wants us to take? 
And that wisdom and concern is a sign or signs of trusting in God. We're listening to Him. We're listening to His Word. We are listening to our Commander instruct us. Yes, there's wisdom. And yet never allow wisdom, though, to lead us, so-called wisdom, to lead us astray. We have every reason to trust in God. There will not be a bird today die apart from God's will. God will provide us everything we need. God takes care of us. And let us not act like the rest of this world. Let us be witnesses today. It was Martin Lloyd-Jones, the famous preacher, who talked about, he wrote a book, he preached sermons, and then it was put in book form called Spiritual Depression. I highly recommend that book to you especially at this time, this downtime that we're going through. Spiritual depression. And in that book, he talks about how one of the reasons there's not as many Christians in the world as they ought to be is because there's so many Christians going around down and unhappy and with no joy. Let us not be a Christian like that. Don't, if, I know some of you may be working more than ever right now. And, and, we're, and maybe you're in different, working in different ways as well now. I don't know your situation. But if you're in quarantine, don't waste your time. Use it for God. Think of your time apart as a gift of God. Maybe you've always wanted to study the Bible more. Maybe you've always wanted to read good Christian books more. But look what God has given you. It's a gift of God. Don't waste it. And I'll say to you this morning, these great promises that I'm talking about, though God most certainly gives the rain to the just and the unjust, God is good to everyone, regardless of if they are His child or not. And yet, the promise that God will turn everything out for our good is only for Christian people. God, you may not be a Christian today, but God has richly taken care of you. He's given you everything you need. Well, you know, the Bible says the goodness of God, the kindness of God leads us to repentance. God has been so good to you. Isn't it time to come to Him and repent of your sins and give your life to Him? And after you're saved, to publicly show the world that through baptism. Isn't it time to serve the Lord? May the Lord bless you today.